Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's me, Ludin Kuma, and today we are back with the second installment in the Beginner's Guide series. In the last video, we talked about how to get cards the fastest and what each of the regions do. And in today's video, we're going to get into more of the dynamics inside of the game and how exactly to play Legends of Runeterra. So let's get into that. Before we go any further guys, I just wanted to give you a massive thank you for all the support lately. We've been breaking some crazy milestones lately and it made me want to do a giveaway. I'll be giving away five $10 worth of RP. If you'd like in on this, just make sure that you leave a comment, a like, and you are also subscribed and I will pick a winner in the next week. Thanks a ton again and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. So first things first, let's talk about what variations of cards are inside of Legends of Runeterra. There are unit cards and there are spell cards. The unit cards are divided into two groups known as followers and champion cards. Followers are your basic unit type. They can range anywhere from 1 to 9 mana, which you can see located on the top left of the card. They can have any range of stats, which you can see at the bottom of the card. On the left side of the card, you'll see its power stat, which indicates how much damage that card will deal inside combat. And on the right side of the card you will see the HP stat, which will show how much damage that card can take before dying. Also keep in mind that damage inside this game is permanent, so any damage your card takes will remain on that card until you use a separate card, such as Healing Potion, to heal your card back up to full. Your card could also be healed with a keyword called Regeneration. I'm gonna try my best not to overload you with keyword details because I actually have a third installment to this video planned which will touch on every single keyword in the game and their interactions with other cards. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So apart from followers, the other type of unit in this game is called champions. Champions are special because they can level up. Every champion can level up once and every single champion in the game has a different level up condition. Let's take a look at Elise as an example. So upon initial play, Play, Elise is a normal unit, just like any other follower. When you attack with her, she summons a spiderling. Now in order to level her up, you must end the round with Elise on the board plus three other spider type cards. Also as a side note, let's say Elise is already in play. If you draw another copy of Elise, she will be turned into a spell. Every single champion has its own unique spell. If you end up playing that spell, a copy of that champion will be reshuffled back into your deck. Let's say your champion on the board dies. Those spells in your deck or hand will turn back into that champion. Now you may be wondering, how do I know what category a card belongs to? At the center top of a card, if that unit belongs into a certain category, it'll state it there. So for Elise, it says Spider. So once you've fulfilled that level up condition and you have three other spiders on the board, then she levels up. At this point forward for the rest of the game, Elise will be leveled up permanently. If that copy of Elise dies, any other copy of Elise that you end up drawing out of your deck will also be leveled up. As a general note, leveled up champions are some of the strongest cards in the game. They have some crazy stat margins for their mana value, and they also normally come with some sort of bonus that no other card can really match. With that being said, not every single deck needs a champion. The primary deck that I'm recommending for beginners right now, which I'll have in the description below, has no champions at all. So just because champions are generally the strongest units in the game, that doesn't mean you have to have them in your deck. Alright, so now that we've covered units, let's tackle spells cards. Spell cards are divided into three categories, slow, fast, and burst. I'm going to cover this very briefly because I think you need to know how turn priority in this game works before you can fully understand the differences between the spells. So if this doesn't fully make sense, don't worry, it'll make more sense once we cover more things later down the road. Slow spells are only playable on your turn. You cannot play them during combat, and when you play a slow spell, they cannot be played in conjunction with any other slow spell. You can, however, play a slow spell in combination with a fast and burst spell, but after you've played that slow spell, you cannot play any other unit, nor can you make an attack. After the slow spell, your turn is over. Fast spells are much more flexible. You can use fast spells while initiating an attack, and you can use them to answer any other spell your opponent uses. But just like with slow spells, if you cast a fast spell at the start of your turn, your turn is over. It's also worth noting that you can play as many fast spells in one turn as you'd like. Now let's cover burst spells. Burst spells are the only card in the entire game that don't require you to pass the priority over to your opponent after you play it. Meaning, you can play a burst spell and then follow it up with any other card in the entire game. A slow spell, a fast spell, another burst spell, or even a unit. 
So now that we've talked about all the different types of cards there are, let's jump into the game itself. When you first start a match of Legends of Runeterra, you will be met with the Mulligan phase. What this means is you'll be presented with four cards. Of those four cards, you can choose any of them to have them reshuffled back into your deck and draw new cards in place of them. So if you have a high mana cost card in your opening hand, you can choose to Mulligan that card, send it back into your deck, and re-attempt to draw a low cost card. So the cards that you want to keep in your opening hand depend on what deck you're playing, what deck your opponent is playing, and what your win condition will be in that game. But generally, if you're just getting started into this game, if it costs more than 5 mana, you probably want to throw it away. Now that we've decided our opening hand, the game has now officially started. At the beginning of each game, you start with 1 mana. Every single turn after that, you gain an additional mana. So on turn 2, you have 2 mana, turn 3, you have 3 mana, and so on. Any mana you choose to not spend that turn will be converted into spell mana. Spell mana is represented as the three orbs underneath your mana bar. This is mana that can only be used on spells. Any spell mana that is banked will stay banked for the rest of the game until you choose to use a spell. Now let's cover attacking and defending. Every single turn, one player will be assigned the attack token. The attack token is right next to your mana pool. It symbolizes who's the attacker and who's the defender of each round. The game's tempo is separated into turns and rounds. After every action, the turn priority is then passed to the other player. He gets to make an action, and the turn priority is passed back to you. If both players choose to pass simultaneously, then the round ends. Your primary mana bar is refilled, and the attack token is then swapped to the other player. To give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, let's talk about an example. So in the beginning of the game, I start out with the mulligan phase. On round one, my opponent has the attack token. This means he gets the first turn in the round. He has nothing to play, so he passes the priority to me. I have a one mana cost card, so I go ahead and play it. Once again, he has nothing to do, so he passes again. Since I'm the defender, I can't attack here. I must pass. Now that we've both passed, the round is over, we go into round two, and I now have the attack token. In this example, I choose to play a card first. He then gets the opportunity to play a card as well, and since I have the attack token, I then attack. He chooses where he wants to block, chooses if he wants to cast any spells, and the priority is back over to me. I get to choose if I want to cast any spells, and now that we've both passed, the combat goes through. Since I initiated combat, it is now his turn. He has no mana left, so he passes. I have no mana left, so I pass, and then the round is over. Our mana bars refill, and now he has the attack token. And those are the fundamentals of Legends of Runeterra. The game will be played out like that until one player's nexus reaches 0 HP. Once your nexus hits 0, you lose. Another lose condition is if you run out of cards to draw. If you have no cards and you attempt to draw, you lose. Legends of Runeterra has a 40 round limit. If you hit that 40 round limit and the game doesn't end on round 40, it's a tie game. You can hold a maximum of 10 cards in your hand at a time. If you attempt to draw an additional card, that card will be obliterated. While you're playing Legends of Runeterra, there are some tools to help you see how combat is going to be played out. The first tool I want to talk about is called Oracle's Eye. When you hover over the Oracle's Eye, it shows you how combat will be played out. I checked this thing religiously to make sure that I'm not doing any math incorrectly. It's an amazing tool for beginners and experts alike to make sure that there aren't any hidden interactions underneath the surface between two keywords going on that you're not aware of. The second tool is the history log. This is represented by the scroll on the left hand side and will show you exactly what has been played and exactly the outcome throughout the entire match. It'll also show you what round you're on, which is good to know in case you're approaching the 40 round limit. And I think that's most of the end game stuff. There are a couple things that I didn't cover in this video, but I will be sure to cover them in part three. Now let's briefly talk about deck construction. Every single deck consists of 40 cards and up to two regions. The maximum amount of copies you can have of each card is three. And at most, your deck can contain six champions, whether that's one copy of six champions or three copies of two champions. Like I've stated before, if a champion levels up, it's leveled up for the rest of the game. So if if you're gonna run a champion, you want to try and run as many copies of that champion as possible most of the time. Most decks will be comprised
comprised of two champions. Some will have three, but I really recommend sticking to two. If you're a new player and you want my recommendation for a deck to play, you can check out the part one of this series, but I will also leave a couple deck codes below. You can also always feel free to check me out live on twitch.tv slash luden underscore kuma. I stream every single day at 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Eastern time. And I think that about wraps it up, guys. I really do appreciate you watching. And if you want to support this channel, it does a lot if you leave a like and a comment down below. I reply to every single comment on all of my videos. So feel free to ask anything you'd like. Thank you very much for watching to the end of the video. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.